Okay, I think we're just going to start now. Um, so I have this. We're going to look at uh, basic templates today. Um, so I have this example here, just the basic add function. It adds two integers, very simple. And if you run this, it just outputs eleven. There we go. Um, and if we want to say add two float numbers, we could write another function like that and return a plus b and 5.5 and 6.2 for example i need to make these floats and that will work as well now the problem is this is going to get very tedious if you have to add many many numbers together and this is why c++ has templates uh, to help solve this so basically you see this body is always the same it's always just a plus b and the way we solve this is we write a function, add, and this function add, it should work for any type. So we introduce that with the template keyword, just like that, and these angle brackets. And so we put in here a type name, t. So basically we tell the compiler, we just uh, have an arbitrary type t here. And then we just write our function. It returns a t, that's just any type. And it takes a t and another t. So basically, and then return a plus b. So basically, this is a function, a function to add two numbers of any type, and we just call it t, so we can refer it uh, just like that. And as you can see, it already uh, compiles here. So if you just run it, then again, same thing, we will get 11.7, and we can do the same. We can also print uh, 4 and 6, for example, and that will just work uh, just the same. So that's like why we need templates, really. Um, and so basically, you can also um, specify which type to use here. So basically, we call add for the float type. So we need to uh, pass in some floats then, just like that. So then we call add with t equal to this float. So we uh, pass in two floating point numbers, and we get the floating point. Uh, the reason we can also not specify this is that the compiler is smart enough to figure out that we pass into floats, so we can uh, the compiler says, okay, so this is float then. Uh, that's called template deduction. Um, another thing, uh, you can also add two numbers of different types by just adding a comma and another type over here. So for example, we call it u. So then we can add a t and a u together, just like that, and add four and a half and four. Now, there's a problem with this, but I'm not going to go too much in depth about this. Uh, you can solve this with some type traits and stuff, but basically you'll always return a T here, even if it doesn't, the result doesn't fit in a T, but that's, that's fine for now, just to demonstrate that you can add multiple different types in here and it will just work. Um, so you can also uh, template other things. So we can add a template to a function, but suppose we have this struct value or something, and we store an integer in there like that. We can do value like that. But if we want to use the value struct for something else, then we have to type it all over again uh, with another name. So this would be value int. We would have value floats etc etc just annoying so we can also introduce a template here and say template type name t and then we can store a t as a value in here and as you can see the compiler errors here because we need to specify which t to use and in this case we'll try int and we have to rename this and there we go. So this syntax is actually maybe familiar for someone who's worked with st standard library before, because if you use, for example, vector, it has vector, and then the t parameter that we have here. So basically, if you would declare a vector, it would something, be something like 
T and then the class vector. And it has a T for data and a size and and other stuff like that. So that's basically how you would like make a very basic vector that can store any type. So you just have this this type name T here, and you can use the T as if it was any type uh, later on. Of course, if I try to use T here, um, it won't work anymore. Like the T stops over here. Um, just like that. Uh, and another cool thing with templates is you can not only you can pass types in there, just like like this, but you can also pass values to a template. Um, and uh, to show this, I'm going to write another um, thing uh, from the standard library, which is array. So if you just use this, uh, we have to specify a type and a size, for example, six. And this array is basically the same as if I would write a raw array like this. Um, so yeah, you can see that this value is also inside the template. And so how we do that, we just uh, type name t, and then a, another one with the type, the size t for example, uh, the amount of values, and then we just do struct array t values n. And you can use this n variable in here. Now for these, there's a few restrictions. Uh, for example, the value has to be known at compile time, so I cannot do something like cn uh, input the value and then do array int v, that won't work. It has to be a compile time value. And also, uh, it cannot be like a custom class or a float number. You can see float doesn't work. No float point type uh, template parameter is non-standard. And if I have my own struct in here, that won't work as well. Uh, however, for C++20, there is a proposal to change this, I think. So you can have um, custom structs in, in there. OK, uh, so I can use it like this, array int and then 55 or something. And this just has then the values, the values, and you can see here that we have this array. Uh, so that's that's value templates, very important uh, for uh, some other stuff. And then the final really important thing is template specialization. So basically, if I have this function, uh, which returns if two values are equal, so I can return a equals b, just like that. And that works fine if I do it a and b equals 6, and I print equal a b. That will obviously print true. Uh, but the problem is, uh, if I want to use this for floats, float a equals uh, 3, and float b equals two plus one, and I then try to output this. Okay, so that is actually true. Um, maybe this works. That's weird. Um, if I try this with bigger numbers, like 10,000 and something like like this, I think. Yeah, okay, so anyway, basically the idea is with floating point numbers, uh, you shouldn't use the, uh, this equal operator because um, compilers and computer and math um, floats may or may not be equal uh, because of the way they're stored. 
Like you cannot consistently use uh, this operator to compare two flows. So the solution for this is to have our uh, regular template here, but we want to use a different function for floats. So I, we could write, uh, so you basically want another function for floats that just returns um, on the if the difference between the two is smaller than some threshold, just like that. Uh, so basically we want to use this function instead for floats. Um, but this is not actually uh, the way to do that. Uh, we want to make this function a specialization of this function. So the way we do that is we add a template over here, but without the type name. And what we have to do then is we have to specify which one uh, we have to specialize. So now if t uh, is float, then it will use this version. And if t is not float, like if t is... Uh, not float like an integer it will use this version instead um you can also do this with, with classes so suppose we have a class or structs with the struct templates so we have the type name t and we have struct x like that and suppose we want to uh, if t is an integer then we just we want to start two integers for no reason at all then we just do template struct x for int and int v2. And the cool thing about this is you can actually add another template in here as well. So, um, for example, if we have a t value here, then uh, I can store uh, an integer like that value. But suppose I want, uh, if x is a, if we supply a pointer like that, then we don't want uh, to store the pointer, but the underlying value. What we could do then is say, make a specialization like that. So now if we, uh, if it matches, if the, uh, the template parameter here, the int pointer matches uh, t star, then it will use this version instead. So you can see that uh, v and v dot value, if you look at it, it isn't a regular integer instead of uh, the t pointer, which it would have been if we would have used this. Um, the problem is though, uh, this is called, called a partial specialization. Well, if you would have like nothing in here, This is a full specialization. Uh, and the thing is with functions, function templates, uh, like that, and if you have another one, um, if you try this the way we did it before, that won't actually work because for functions, you cannot use a partial specialization. You can do it for uh, structs and classes, but not for functions, for reasons unknown to me, but yeah. It's just annoying, really, in my opinion. Okay. Um, if there's any questions, just uh, drop in chat and I'll try to answer. Uh, yeah, template can be a single character, can be anything you like. Uh, yeah. Um, and uh, as a next thing, I want to uh, quickly look at how uh, templates work in the compiler, really, because right now it might seem all magic, like you can use it with any type. Uh, but basically what happens, if you make a template function, like that, I'll just use a very simple one right now. And if you then, uh, it just defines really an outline of the function. So you get uh, TA, and do something with it, I don't know, like print it. Uh, basically, this defines like the outline of the function, really. 
And whenever the compiler, so it uh, it takes this template and it stores this it somewhere. The compiler uh, comes across this in the source and sees, oh, there's a template function. Okay, it stores it somewhere in some database. I don't know, and it continues. And then when we when the compiler sees uh, this f for int, it just goes into that database and it is like, oh, okay, I found this template here, which is f, and it just starts uh, making a full copy of that function. But then with the integer in here. Uh, and just, just then it just replaces all the templates, uh, and after that it goes to check like does it does it actually compile this template if I fill it in, so that way you can you only get the error for uh, if a template doesn't work like say I have um, a template for multiplying two things, uh, there we go. A multiply B. Uh, if I try to call multiply for a string now, obviously you cannot multiply two strings together, so this won't compile. There we go. Binary uh, T does not define as operator or conversion to accept all type, blah blah. So basically, it says uh, compiler comes across this, it starts to instantiate this template, it's how that's called, so it copies it, it writes out string everywhere. String, string, and string, and then it says, "Oh, I can't multiply two strings," so it gives an error. Uh, obviously, it would, if you would use integers, like three and four, it would just compile. So for every different uh, template you give to the function, it makes a whole new function. So that's one of the reasons why many people think like, oh, if I have many templates, then my code will be extremely large after compiling. Uh, yeah, maybe, but it's compile time, so it's fast. Um, and one of the things, um, and that's also very different uh, from with normal functions, if I have a, uh, I'll just add a new source file. Um, there we go, and a new header file as well. Right, so I ha I want to uh, create a normal function, so I just do this, um, declare it in the header and then implement it in source like f okay, include the header, and I can include iostream or something, and print something. Like that, and then we can include that header just like we would normally. And call f, no problem. This just compiles, there's no, no templates involved, and it prints f. Now, when we would make f a template function, like this, and we want to give it something to print, and then I think I'm smart, so I Put it over here as well, and we print a. Okay, cool. I got my template in the header. Got it defined here, so it should work, right? Oh yeah, we forgot to give it a parameter. No problem. Except now we get this weird linker error, unresolved external symbol, blah 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 blah. Wait, what's the difference between templates and generics? Uh, generics are not really a thing in C++, well, they are, they're called templates, so basically it's not really um, the same, it's just another name for uh, for the same thing. Um, well, but the reason we're getting this error is the compiler, it starts compiling C, uh, this program, and it comes across F, and it does see this, but this is not enough information to fill in the whole uh, function body. So basically what you have to do, always have to do with templates, is you have to provide the implementation in a header file. Just like that. I have to include iStream for that. And then we can remove this. So for templates, all the implementations should be inside the header files. So if I run this now, you can see this actually does compile. And it works fine, prints five. 
Um, so yeah, that's one very important thing to uh, remember. Template functions and classes always implement in the header files because otherwise you'll get weird linker errors. Yeah, full specializations uh, have to be done in the source. Uh, Visual Studio or VS Code, which do you prefer? I prefer Visual Studio because it's just easier to work with, but you should always um, uh, consider other alternatives if you're not happy with it, of course. Uh, yeah, Visual Studio has way more features, so it's way easier to use for beginners. That's why I think uh, you should use Visual Studio. But yeah, that's just my opinion. Um, that's about the most basic stuff uh, about templates you can get. So basically, anytime you have uh, something that needs to work for many different types, you can use templates to uh, avoid repeating your, yourself. Um, but just don't overdo it or you get uh, many, many long header files and huge compile times and that might be some of the uh, issues. So yeah, what are templates used for? Basically, um, the basic example I always give is, say you have this function uh, to add two numbers, just like that, turn A plus B. And then I want another function to add two floats. And then I want another function and another one and another one for many different types. It's just annoying. You get to type out the same function body all over again. So basically you introduce this template to the compiler, uh, just like that. And it just says, okay, this is a function add. It takes some type T, we don't know yet what type. It, take, uh, it returns that T and it takes two T's and it just adds them together. So basically you say, this is, this is any type T and do whatever uh, you, want with it, you want with it. And then we can just call add uh, with two integers or we can add, call add with two floats. And it will just uh, work for all those types uh, automatically. Yeah, basically. Uh, are there any more uh, questions? All right. Uh, so when you create a linked list using node struct, how do you do that with templates and also why does a node... Okay, first a simple question. Uh, what's the difference between a HPP and a CPP file? Um, HPP is the same as uh, just .h, um, it's just a header file. So you include that and you don't typically write any implementations there. And the CPP files are the files that are actually compiled by the compiler. The compiler just copy pastes all these files in your CPP files, really. Um, yeah. So when you create a linked list using a node struct, how do you do that with templates? Basically, uh, so we want a template type name T class linked list. So we're going to use this like linked list int list. Just like that. Um, and then this, uh, we need the node struct as well. So we'll just create a node struct. And it has a um, t as the value. Uh, we'll just t value. And a pointer to the next node. Because what a linked list really is, is just um, a whole bunch of uh, yeah, the first node, so we just have the first one, and the first one points to the next one, and next to the next, etc., etc. So you keep, um, you have like a list of links that just link to the next one every now and then. So this is the, the type T, and you can use it uh, down here. That's like the basic stuff uh, for a linked list. Yeah. So yeah, why does it have to be a node, uh, a node star? Well, basically, if you, if it would be this, um, you can do that. 
but the thing is that um, now you don't really get a list of nodes, but you just get a node storing a node, storing another node, storing another node. So you get like a tree going down really, instead of just a linear uh, list of nodes. But it would maybe work. But yeah, now just one node stores another node, stores another node, stores another node. Uh, and also, I don't think this compiles actually. Okay, it does. Whatever. Um, So yeah, basically, if it would be um, if this, then uh, one node stores the next node. Um, so you have a node in a node in a node in a node in a node, etc. Instead of having nodes linked to the next node, linked to the next node, linked to the next node, and linked to the next one, etc. Uh, and also, if you store this, these nodes inside each other, then like removing a node in the middle of the list becomes really annoying because if it's a pointer, all you do is you just uh, reassign uh, the next one of the previous nodes and you delete the, this one. Uh, but if the nodes are stored inside each other, you have to like uh, rework the entire list just to remove a value. And that's not really the point. Yeah, I thought that too, but apparently it's either Visual Studio being bad or uh, or it might actually uh, work anyway. I think if we try... Uh... This... No, okay, whatever. Um, uh, well, these nodes are basically just, um, this might be for another lecture, but basically um, a linked list. The idea is you, uh, this node just stores a value and the next value. So it's like a, a list of uh, things, really. And they, they point to each other. Um, it's not really for, for this lecture, I think, so. Well, we might uh, discuss it in another one. In another one, uh, if we talk about data structures. All right. Um, if there's no more questions, then I think we're done for today. A little bit of a short stream, but uh, it's only the basics that we're covering right now. So. Because if I would go more complicated, it would get very, very complicated very quickly. So that's why. Yeah, I thought it would be illegal indeed. Uh, all right. Uh, thanks for tuning in then. And um, why do you need two CPP files? Can't everything be? Um, yeah, could be, but then you hand, end up with like uh, really, really long compile times and you generally want to uh, split up stuff as much as you can. Well, not as much as you can, but as much as makes sense. For a small project, you can just put everything in one CPP file and it just works. Uh, but yeah, for a very small uh, project, you can use one CPP file. All right, that's it. Um, so uh, thank you for uh, for tuning in.